Thanks for joining me again. This, this painting is going to be of Loch here up in, the, um, up in Scotland. That's just clear water put on. And then I'm going to go a bit of raw sienna, a bit of lizard in crimson. You can see, although I normally use it dry, it's not quite, so it's still quite wet. That hasn't quite dried, but it doesn't matter. You can use it fresh out of the tube. This is just a, of my own personal preference, using it dry off the palette. The two, two main reasons are first, I can sort of, I can whiz around the palette, because I like to paint nice and quick. And I can whiz around, without, and I know I'm not going to pick up great big dollops of paint. Um, and then secondly, I'm not wasting any paint from uh, using it fresh and then once it obviously only lasts, it only stays uh, wet for so long and then it dries and then you've got to scrape it off and squeeze some more out the next time you get to paint. You, you end up with a, a lot of wasted paint which I don't, you know, which, um, you know, it's not cheap so you don't like to uh, keep throwing it in the bin. So I started using it like this. This is ultramarine, a bit of Payne's grey. This is a bit of blue sky you can see between the clouds. And it's going to be water at the bottom, so although it's not going to come all the way down, but. I'm just going to get that in. Because I always do it at the same time as I'm putting the sky in, so you don't have to mess about trying to mix this exactly the same colour, which used to be a pain in the, uh, in the back side. So I started getting the whole lot in in one go. A um, bit of lizard in crimson, pain of grey, and a few little clouds there. A You know, as the paint starts to dry, it'll just it'll go on sort of thicker and thicker. If you want to get really dark colours on, you sort of have to, you'll have to let it dry and then put it on again. You can't put it on while it's still wet. You just you just sort of moving wet paint around around the paper. Um, a few clouds in the sky, so I can either use a uh, dirty bit of tissue if I want sort of subtle subtle effects like that, or if I want it really white, use a clean bit of tissue. You see, the, see the difference between the two? Although, to be honest, there's no, not that much difference. I'm going to use a dirty one. A few clays over there. A little drifting around. I think that's, that's, that's it for the background there. So, see the paper's stretched slightly, it's coming away from the board. So, I'm just going to refix that. Get the clips off, pull it tight, refix it. And I'm just going to give that a quick dry. Just enough to stop the paint from drifting down the page. Obviously, if you've got your board at a more acute angle, that won't happen. I only have it like this because it's easy to, to film, make the videos. Otherwise, I'd, I'd have to have the camera on the ceiling, and it gets a bit, a bit awkward. So next, we've got. I'm not going to clean the brush because I want all those sky colours on there to do the background mountains. All I'm going to do. Just so to make it a bit loose, just dip the very tip in the water, and then just take a bit of all those sky colours again, and we sort of put, put, see what I mean about dollops. I've just touched that now. The great big dollops of raw sienna have come off. But I'm just leaning towards blue, 
And I'm going to put in along here some sort of distant, distant hills and mountains. I'm just making sure that parallel with the bottom of the page, bottom of the paper. Not much detail because they're so far away, right, right over on the horizon. Just level them off all the way along, and then just slightly higher on this side. Just making sure that's level. So that's the background hills and mountains. In now we've got a. Get a bit more into that. Get some of these dollops of raw sienna on the brush. And we got a few more hills over there. Just bear in the colour. And I'm giving it a bit of lemon yellow, so it's changing sort of sort of greeny colour. Before I forget, what, what I was gonna, what I was gonna um, do was uh, regular viewers will know at the end of each um, video I do invite your questions. So what I was gonna do was make um, like a series of videos where I answer the questions rather than just answer them, instead of just answering them in the comments in the descriptions. I was gonna make some like a sort of question and answer videos. And then I'll just put them in a separate playlist so they don't get mixed up with the uh, with the um, demonstrations. And I'll just I'll see how that goes. Okay, so just wants to come down a little bit more of this. It's going to a bit of burnt on back. Making sure it's parallel with the bottom of the page, I'm not sort of slanting them one way or the other. Right, now we're sort of. Hang on. Some tiny little buildings you can just about make out. One could be a. could even be a. Just use them just sort of scraping with the card. Can't really tell what they are. It's just something there in the in the distance. Just kept really subtle. Oh, I'm not going to do any more than that. Now, as we come further, getting closer and closer to the foreground. Yeah, I'm just dipping into that raw sienna. I've got some dollops on there. And then this is. The foliage. And for a bit of blue, really darken it up a bit. And that's going, that's going all the way over. All the way up there. Sienna. A bit of blue to it, just to really darken it up. And I'm just constantly trying to just vary the colour to keep it interesting. And what I might do is clean the brush now, so it's all really dark. To get back to your light, you're going to have to clean the brush. Just take the excess off on the tea towel. So you just got a clean, damp brush. And then I can go into the Lemon yellow, maybe a little dollop of raw sienna again. And you see, we're back to nice light colours. The yellow, raw sienna. Ultramarine, lemon yellow, that's. A 
lemon yellow, Heinz grey. And just a few little going on up there, a bit more lemon yellow, Payne's grey. I think I'm going to sort of, what I might do is put like a little yacht, little yacht in the distance, just to give it a, a focal point. So before I do that, I'm going to have to make sure it's dry. Decide where I want the yacht to go. So I want it nice and dark so that when I take the paint off, it contrasts nicely the white sails against the dark background. So I think this is might be too a bit too close. I don't know. Um, I think that's too far away. I might go somewhere. I'm going to put it over here, I think. Put it over there. All I'm doing is using a clean damp brush and I'm just doing a, a sail shape. I'm trying to keep it quite small, obviously at this distance. It's not going to be too big. And then just use a tissue just to take a bit of paint off and you're left with a just the impression of a little yacht on the horizon there. Um, sticking with the rigger, let's put a just some little birds. Oh, a bit darker than that. Some birds there flying off, and then last but not least. In a quiet corner somewhere, just stick your name. Don't forget to sign it. You don't want to put it right in the very corner because if you do put a mount on it, you won't see it. And that's the finished painting. So let's see what it looks like with the mount on. They all seem to look better with the mounts on, so if we go in and have a closer look. The sky is sort of split into two, predominantly on this side we've got a... This was ultramarine panes grey with a bit of tissue to take out the clouds. This side was raw sienna and alizarin crimson. Um, you get a bit of alizarin crimson and panes grey, a few more clouds overlaying that. The, the horizon line, I've, I've deliberately pushed it right up so it was just below the sort of darker, the darker colours just so that the profile of the hills and mountains in the distance stood out better. A few dollops of uh, raw sienna went on to add a bit of variation there, not too much because it's quite far away. A little boat I put in just taking off the paint with a, 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 a damp rigger brush. So this was um, sort of quite a thick mix of uh, Payne's grey, um, lemon yellow, sort of create this, basically to get so you could see the uh, profile against the uh, the background. That's a really make a really strong mix just to get a bit of contrast in there. It's only a small island. Um, closer and closer into the foreground. You see, not a lot happening, but I've. Got I've tried to vary it as much as possible to keep it interesting. You can see here, I, did, I, didn't, I, didn't, I mean, I hadn't cleaned the brush as a, all the way around. It was only when I got to this sort of bit I cleaned the brush, and you can see how 
We've ended up with lighter colours, just adds a nice contrast to the rest of the foreground. Also gives the impression of the sort of light it's in this area. Another strong mix of Payne's grey, lemon yellow. I mean, this, this green's almost, it's that dark, it's almost black. But a few, corner of the brush, just to add a bit of texture to the foreground, make it look as if there's a bit of grass growing here and there. And against the light here, it looks like it's sort of silhouetted against the light. Finally, we've got our birds flying up over the horizon line. Well, I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. Any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.